All right, everybody, uh, we're going to get started. Welcome to our uh, Scranton City Council Caucus. It is Tuesday, February 9th, 5.45 p.m. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, we have quite a few things on the agenda tonight, so we'll start tonight's caucus off by just going through the fifth order uh, items one by one, uh, see if anybody has any questions or uh, anything that they'd like to add or go over uh, or add to the discussion. So the first one uh, is 5B, and that is the uh, liquor license transfer. Uh, this is something that uh, we voted on back in the summer of 2020. And um, the second page was missing from this. So that is going to be included for next week. It was just a, an, an error. Uh, didn't get included when it came down um, from the, the law department. Uh, Lori, it, will we include that in third order next week? How will that work? Um, I would just we rescan and then just upload everything onto Granicus so the full packet. Um, because I'm not sure I'm not sure what happened. I'm not sure what happened with that. Um, if the page is stuck together, if it wasn't in the mix when the initial piece came down with it, I'm not sure. Um, which I'll know I'll be in the office tomorrow, so I'll be able to determine better. But that was my thought, just to attach it. It just um, there's a sentence or two in the, in the now therefore clause, and then it's section one, two, and three, which is standard on every piece of legislation. So I don't think, and of course I, I would defer to Kevin, but I don't think there's anything, no. um, you know, uh, extraordinary that I think it's just a, it was a clerical error or a matter of housekeeping. We've recognized it and we'll attach it for next week. Right. I think, I think we're fine. All this is, this, this legislation is just um, uh, the applicant asked uh, for, for the liquor license transfer, at, uh, received a letter from the Liquor Control Board just requesting us to confirm that there was a hearing, which there was. That's all we're doing is to, is indicating that a hearing did take place back in July. So I, I, I don't think there should be any delay because of that page was missing. Right, we're fine. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Um, the second uh, piece, 5C, that is the, um, the dog license. Uh, the, the administration has sent a piece of legislation down to us. They're lowering the dog license from $35 to $8.50 uh, for uh, the regular fee and from $20 to $6.50 for a person with a disability or a senior citizen uh, to register their dog. So right now as it stands, um, if you wanted to register your dog in the city, it's $35. They're lowering the fee to $8.50 um, and $6.50 for senior citizens and those with disabilities. So. Um, I think this is a good thing. Thirty. I thought I always thought thirty-five dollars was way too high, um, and it probably was a disincentive for people to to, to pay because this is hard enough to collect as it is. So um, in the backup, it states that you know their rationale for doing this um, is to hopefully get more people uh, to pay the fee and bring it down. I think what the state um, the state charges uh, or. Uh, mirror, yeah, mirror fees that are implemented statewide and in surrounding counties. So does anybody have any questions or concerns on uh, 5C? No, but I'm, I'm happy to see that the administration sent this down because I know that it's something we've received complaints on in the past uh, from citizens that the that the fee did seem exorbitant, um, especially if you're paying county and, and state uh, dog license fees on top of it. So I think this is a uh, much more reasonable and will be a good way to uh, get additional people to uh, pay for uh, for pet licenses. Mm -hmm. Very good. And I think in the 2021 budget, it's there's um, thirteen thousand uh, dollars, no sixteen thousand dollars budgeted. We collected, I think, uh, about twenty thousand in 2020. Kyle, did you have, have something? Uh, yeah, so like I I 100% agree with lowering this, but I did have just a couple questions for Solicitor Hayes that I, you know, called him about, you know, about two hours before our meeting. So I don't know if he got any answers on, you know. Well, yeah, so there's a state, the, the state has a, uh, there's a state licensing fee um, that's imposed and the way it typically applies is the county, 
treasurer collects uh, the, the, the state licensing fee, which is, I believe, for neutered male dogs and for each spayed female, it's uh, an annual fee of $5. For all other dogs, it's $7. And then it offers uh, for a lifetime fee of uh, for $30 for neutered dogs and $50 for all other dogs. Um, but that, like, that state law, the state dog law, does provide for an exception an exception for cities like for uh, cities of the first class, second class, and second class A, which is us, and that that's what permits us to have um, to have our own dog licensing fees and dog laws. Um, so that's why we're separate. We're as someone indicated, they're bringing them more in line with state with the state uh, uh, fees, but there's still there's still more. Um, but that's what per, that's what permits uh, the Scranton to have its own separate licensing fees. Okay. Anything else on five uh, C? All right. Very good. Five uh, D is just a standard piece of legislation. The city's a, a pass through for these type of um, financing opportunities through the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority. So that's a project for Howard Gardner. Uh, we voted on many of these over the last uh, few years, but does anybody have any questions on 5D? Okay. Uh, 5E is a contract that the city is going to execute and enter into with Greenman Peterson. Uh, GPI to perform civil engineering and professional consulting services for the Kaiser Valley stormwater and flood mitigation study. Uh, this is something that I know Councilman Dunahue and myself and all of council uh, has been really pushing for over the last few years because of all every spring and every summer uh, without fail and even into the fall, uh, we get inundated with pleas for help and, and phone calls from residents of the Kaiser Valley area um, because of the awful flooding and, and stormwater issues there. So this is the first step to finally, after years and years, uh, address this once and for all. Uh, so I'm very happy to see this and happy that uh, the administration, um, you know, heeded the, the calls for help from council and, and uh, the neighbors up there. Um, so again, this is a, a first step and, um, you know, looking forward to seeing the, the final study and then what uh, alternatives and, uh, ideas they come up with to, to fix the issues. Does anybody have any questions about 5E? Uh, I just have, and this is just to add on just a little bit there, this is something that needs to be done as a first step, even to apply for a grant. You need to have this on the shelf and ready to go because some of the information that will be in this report will be needed for grant applications. But one of the questions I do have is just really just on the process side. Um, under in the cover sheet under funding sources, it just says the city of Scranton will seek funding from PA DCED program H2L programs to undertake the recommended improvements. I believe that's for the next step because I think this initial step comes out of the general budget. So just so we're on the same page with the administration, I'm going to ask that Lori send uh, correspondence over the administration, just seeing exactly where in. The general fund is that come is this seventy five thousand dollars coming from for this initial project? I think Kyle. I had a um, back and forth with Carl Dealey late in the afternoon after we had spoke, and he uh, said that that seventy four thousand five sixty five eighty seven is coming from uh, professional service. The professional services. Project. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. That was my only question on it. You know, because mm -hmm. it absolutely has to be done. Right. Because those, you know, these that issue, those issues over there need really to be addressed. And this is the first step in that. I agree. It's a yeah. it's a mess. <clears throat> now, my camera isn't working properly and I'll try to get it fixed before the meeting starts. But I, I'm happy to see that this is starting. I I did bring the mayor over there and um, it seems like some of the water that's coming off the um, turnpike is changing course and it's causing some of the issues. Um, starting from the source up up there. So I'm not sure if the administration spoke with the state about the turnpike and some of the um, the routes the water is now taking since 2018, but I hope they did. Okay. Tom, I also believe there's some sort of like, and I don't know exactly where, but I, if 
we had a map, you know what I mean? We'd be able to look at it, but there is some sort of retention pond up there too. I believe that, you know, probably does need some sort of maintenance in terms of cleaning that out. I believe. Yeah, I would, I would imagine it does. Um, I, like I said, I took the mayor for a walk up into there and I brought Chris Jenkins up into that pond. And it appears that since that 2018 flood, that water coming off the turnpike has changed the course. And now the water isn't even making it into the retention pond. And actually, it's coming uh, oh, okay. between and in through two houses over on uh, Newton Road. All right. Okay, any other questions or uh, comments on 5E? Uh, 5F is a contract that oh, city is going to enter into oh, OECD with Benevate. Uh, they're a company that manages uh, different uh, IT type programs in terms of housing economic, uh, economic development and different grant software in OECD. So I went through the, the backup um, and this is something that definitely needs to take place in OECD and help the office become much more efficient. Does anybody have any questions on 5F? Okay, uh, 5G is just um, resolution. The city's accepting a donation from Lamar Advertising for 16 billboards across the city to relay the Scranton 311 message. So if anyone from the, uh, the city has any questions, any concerns, any comments, anything that they need help with in terms of uh, potholes, anything like that, um, it should go to Scranton 311. Um, so that, and I think the email is Scranton311 at, is it at scrantonpa.gov? I can't even remember now off the top of my head. But it's, um, if you go on the city's website, scrantonpa.gov, there's a link there. And uh, they've been getting a lot of uh, messages and, and uh, complaints and they've been uh, pretty responsive. So that's good. Uh, 5H, we're appointing Dave Falchek, David Falchek, uh, as a member of the Ethics Board, effective February 17th, 2021. He's going to be replacing Bruce Redock, who resigned October 1st, 2020, and he's going to fill the unexpired term, which is scheduled to, to expire August 31st, 2021. So that wraps up uh, fifth order. Any other questions or comments on any of those uh, pieces? All right. Um, we are going to bring back the, um, someone will, Kyle will make a motion, I believe, at the beginning of the meeting to uh, bring back that piece, uh, OECD piece that we tabled last week. I did have a chance to talk to Eileen Cipriani, and uh, she answered most of uh, all of the other questions that I have. So there was just a, a misunderstanding uh, there that was cleared up. Um, the city, when they enter into this, uh, this contract with uh, Barry Isett, uh, Barry Isett is going to be the project manager, and according to Eileen, uh, after we went back and forth a little bit, um, the uh, the design work and some other things do have to be bid out on top of this. So I just wanted to make sure that that was correct, um, and she ended up clarifying that for me. Uh, does anybody have any uh, <clears throat> other questions on sixth order or seventh order business that will be uh, entertaining tonight? Now, when it came to that uh, Barry Isla piece, um, did we all get the information on that? I, I was looking for that and I couldn't find it. Which information was that? The, the questions that you had, or was that in a conversation with you and um, Eileen? I had, a, I had a phone conversation and I think Lori, Lori, you forwarded out uh, that back and forth between Eileen and myself, correct? I think. Um, I'll double check in my emails. I'm not, I'm not certain but I'll search and I'll resend anyway. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody have any other questions? All right, very good. Uh, Kevin, do you have anything? Oh, you're muted, Kevin. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, we, last week, I think uh, a resolution was introduced uh, for first reading uh, from the administration, which um, uh, asked that we accept the denial or affirm the denial of the HARB um, to an application that was submitted by um, L.R. Costanzo for lighting at in the 200 block of Penn Avenue, the PNC building. The, uh, someone asked what the process is. 
the process is at this point is um, we have to, council has to uh, have a hearing uh, regarding that recommendation um, and, and, and the denial by, by the HARB within 45 business days of the denial, which was January 14th. So on or before, I, I believe it is, because it's 45 business days, I believe it's, uh, I, I circulated a memo earlier today. I think it's March 19th. We have to have a hearing um, where we'll invite the applicant um, and the property owner to come and offer any uh, testimony that they want in support of their application. And then we decide that day uh, in seventh order uh, on the resolution. Uh, so I don't know if anyone has any questions on that process. I don't wanna get into the substance of the application because in this, in this regard, you got uh, council is going to be almost a quasi judicial. They're going to, you guys are going to be making a determination. So we'll just wait till the evidence is presented. But if you have any questions on the process, I'll be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you. Uh, no, that clears it up. And then thanks for uh, looking into that, Kevin. And then uh, Kyle is going to make a motion when we get to seven F to table uh, seven. Great. Okay. Great. Um, I I just had a quick question. So. Um, I believe there are some suggestions made as to what um, changes they could make um, in order for it to um, to be approved. Right. So they would just go back then and uh, right. resubmit their, their application, right? Right, so they could withdraw this current application and modify uh, their plan and, and resubmit it to the HARB. I think there is some ongoing dialogue on that. In, on that issue, but I, I'm not certain of it. But the answer to your question, Dr. Rothschild, is yes, they could do that. Okay, thank you. Um, in terms of other updates, um, I know Bill and uh, Kyle, we, I, we, uh, I set up a, a call with um, the city's law department to get an update on the Meadowbrook uh, situation, uh, especially with regard to the 1700 block of Wyoming Avenue. And that call will be Monday. We'll, we'll firm up a time. Um, and I know you guys had uh, raised questions on the status of the um, delinquent refuse fee collector. Um, I spoke with the solicitor today, and he indicated that, that it's still there's still ongoing discussions between at least two of the the bidders. Uh, so they have not yet identified who is going to be the collector. Uh, of the re delinquent refuse fees for 2020, uh, but stay tuned for updates, I guess. I think that's it for me. All right, thanks, Kevin. Lori, do you have anything? Um, I do not, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, then we'll just go around the room here. Jess, do you have anything? Do you have that good as um, order here? Yeah, just real quick, I just wanna add, um, you know, I recently had a conversation with uh, Mr. Uh, Todd Posley from uh, NeighborWorks, and uh, he mentioned that they were interested in providing counsel with an update on their programs. I think it's been a while since we've heard from them, so um, I know I was excited to uh, to hear about what they have cooking, and um, so I um, I think I had sent that message to you and to, to Lori, uh, to Mrs. Reed, and she had set up uh, for Tuesday, February 23rd for our caucus to have them come in um, just to present on their their, pro their programs. Okay, great. Yep, looking forward to that. Thank you very much. Yep, no problem. Uh, Councilman McAndrew, anything? Um, this just goes back to Solicitor Hayes, because I know we talked about this last week. I, I, wa I wanna know if you got anywhere with regards to a permanent appointment of right. the acting versus interim do we get figure out that language or, or right. be compliance or not a compliance so i have a call um the i submitted a correspondence to the um solicitor's office they direct they redirected it to um their labor solicitor bob uffberg and bob and i are scheduled to uh have a call this later this week hopefully tomorrow on that issue, but I spelled out um, the concerns uh, in an email to the solicitor and then I did to Bob Offberg. So hopefully I'll have an update for you later by the, by the end of this week. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Kyle, do you have anything? Uh, 
I didn't, but then Jess just made me remember by bringing up neighbor works. Uh, Lori, normally around this time, we, you know, we have our quarterly updates too from NDC and usually Scranton tomorrow. Um, and usually we get some sort of, you know, update from PA American Water on their upcoming projects for the year. So uh, maybe we could be a little proactive and just reach out to them and see if, you know, they're ready to give us their quarterly updates. Um, and then, you know, in the next few weeks, just so we can mm -hmm. get them scheduled out. Mm -hmm. um, I've already reached out to uh, Leslie Collins, the executive director of Scranton tomorrow. So we're just working out a date. Um, we had one tentatively set. Um, however, I'll confirm with her a date. Um, next week, actually, um, NDC has confirmed to attend your caucus to provide uh, the parking update. And then as Dr. Rothschild mentioned, we have um, neighbor works coming in the following. Um, and I think I'll reach out to the water company. My last contact there was with Mr. Hoover, of course, who um, I believe he may have retired. I'm not sure. Yeah, but I, he did. He, oh, okay. So perhaps that that is why. But I'll um, I'll look through some resources and 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 try to reach out and get something scheduled there if they're interested. Yeah, because I believe the last few years they come in in February or March just to give us sure. an update on what they had planned for the year. Will do. Thank you. Anything else, Kyle? Nope, oh, that's it. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Schuster, do you have anything? So I, I think the two main things I was going to talk about, one was the permanent appointment of the police chief, with, which Mark covered. Um, and the other one was, did we get a, a decent email on the uh, Meadowbrook project? I know the, the email we received was in a document that we couldn't open, and I wasn't able to open that. Did we get in that? Did we get that in a different format? Um, I, I don't I don't know. I'll ask Lori in a second, but I did have a chance, a brief opportunity to talk to the um, the city engineer, uh, John Poshis, and they just had a meeting with uh, or he had a meeting with Don King, the city planner and Joe O'Brien, the city solicitor uh, on the Meadowbrook project. And just the fact that in the next few weeks, at some point, uh, we're going to be receiving legislation and voting on the sponsorship agreement. And uh, I think one other thing, just to bring, bring this whole thing, this final phase together. So at that point, you know, we'll get the drawings and, and all of that stuff. I, I, I couldn't open that link and I don't know what happened with that, um, but we are going to get that within the next um, few weeks. Okay, yeah, some of the questions I had about that ended up being in that inf information that was sent in the, in the second round that, that was in that document that wasn't able to be opened. Um, other than that, I guess just um, uh, President Gahan, you had a couple of things that you asked for last week and they were things that we've been waiting for updates on. So like the RFP for recycling, um, payroll prep tax, Act 47 recommendations, um, and maybe the residency updates with the city. Did we get any, um, any info on any of those, those requests? Yeah. So on the, uh, I asked for a, a few things. So Carl Dealey did get back to, to Lori. On the consideration of waiving the, the $500 annual entertainment fee, that's something that I, I brought up and I think all of us were in favor of um, a few weeks ago. Uh, this, According to the business administrator, the city's working on a fee reduction on a pro-rated basis. So we should be receiving legislation within the next uh, few weeks. Okay. Um, as Kevin mentioned on the appointment of the the uh, you know, the permanent police chief, uh, Kevin and the Labor Council are going to have, a, um, Bob Uffberg are going to have a meeting this week. Um, the appointment of a zoning officer, I know that Kyle had brought that up and we had sent something along there. Um, Carl Dealey responded that the city's been successful in finding a qualified candidate and an offer has been made. So that should be coming uh, down the pipe hopefully soon. That was, that was the zoning officer? What was that? That was the zoning officer? The zoning officer, yeah. Okay, with that, there was a couple, couple positions that I, I saw recently, they, the administration said they had filled. Um, okay, and that was one of them. All right. On the uh, delinquent refuse collector, um, uh, Carl Dealey said, our legal office is finalizing contract amendments based on feedback from council. The contract proposal will be submitted to council next week. Um, 
So we should be seeing that next week. And then recycling, he's uh, a, a communication was sent to um, council on December 18th, 2020. And, and he said, subsequent conversations will occur. We will organize a meeting to discuss options. Um, I also asked about the business privilege and mercantile tax to the payroll preparation tax and what the mayor's plan was in regards to that conversion. Um, he stated that the review of the conversion of the payroll prep tax is ongoing as part of the mayor's tax committee. The committee is looking forward, looking to put forward tax and fee recommendations by May of 2021. Um, there was a question uh, that I had posed from Norma Jeffries. Uh, on the uh, street sign update, and they're, they were going to gather information on that and provi provide an update as soon as possible. And then on the walkability study, um, that was on hold, according to the business administrator for now, as they explore uh, funding opportunities. Okay. And and I've been meaning to call uh, Director Priambo about and street sign about a couple things, but street signs is on my list. I just didn't want to get you know bother him, I guess, you know, over the last week um, in terms of the amount of snow we got, but that is on my list of things to bring up with him too. Yeah, and they did, they put, uh, and we voted on um, legislation to, uh, for them to go out and, and attempt to get a grant money to replace every faded and, and uh, worn out street sign in the city. And there, there was, they, they did provide us a list at one point in there was yes. a lot. I mean, I think it was, I can't remember the exact amount, but it was a significant amount. So I don't know if we got that, uh, if we received that grant money, but Carl said he'll, he'll give us a, he'll give us a full up. And there were a couple of positions added there too, right? Yeah. There, I think there was one position added, uh, in the, uh, DPW for traffic sign maintenance. So that should help because there was only one, I think there was only one or two people in there for the whole city. Yeah, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there was one and then a casual. So if the casual was pulled somewhere else, they weren't there, but right. yeah. Right. All right, thanks. Okay, very good. Anything else from anyone? All right. Um, oh, I did want to mention, so in seventh order tonight, the, the PISA, we're forming that ad hoc committee um, to uh, <clears throat> whether it's to explore the feasibility of uh, renaming Wyoming Avenue or another prominent roadway in honor of uh, President Biden. So I did uh, cobble together the uh, committee members over the last uh, few days. So it's gonna be myself, uh, Councilman Donahue. So we'll represent uh, the council on the committee, uh, Don King, the city planner, Leslie Collins, the executive director of Scranton Tomorrow. So she'll represent um, any of the business owners uh, Larry West, the Chief of Staff for Senator Blake, Roberta Jaddick, the Secretary for the Green Ridge Neighborhood Association, uh, Kevin Hayes, our solicitor, will be on the committee, and Mark Dewar uh, will represent the county. He's the uh, Director of Building Maintenance. So we'll, uh, you know, start meeting in the uh, very near future uh, after final passage tonight, and then we'll report back to Council um, when we have updates. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention too briefly, and I'll talk about this during our, our meeting in, in a little bit, the, um, the Third Avenue issue, um, we received a letter two weeks ago from the residents. Uh, they had signed a letter, uh, a few dozen of them. Um, as all of you know, I, I w was working with one resident who was kind of representing the whole street uh, about a year ago. This goes back about a year um, with the issues of truck traffic on Third Avenue. We did make some changes that I thought would alleviate the problem last summer, um, but it's continued to get worse, unfortunately. Um, the mayor did respond uh, in an email to me that the police department was continuing to patrol the, uh, patrol the area. Um, I spoke to a resident, I think several of us spoke to the, one of the residents who had called the office uh, today. She's been living there for 27 years um, and it's, you know, they, they really are having a hard time with it. It's, you know, between the noise and the uh, rattling of their houses and just the constant up and down the street with truck traffic when they've never had that before. And this is because of the closure of, um, or the weight limits put on uh, Elm Street. So as I mentioned uh, two weeks ago, the ultimate solution is the replacement of the Elm Street Bridge. Unfortunately, that's like three or four years out, most likely. Um, we did pass uh, months and months ago 
a package that was put together by the city engineer and the DPW and the administration uh, bridge package. So we, we are going to replace several bridges in the city uh, with state money, and that's great, and city money. Um, but that, again, is like three or four years out. So what I'd like to do is, is uh, send forward that letter officially to the administration um, and ask them to take another look at this, uh, whether they do an analysis or something, any ideas to lessen the uh, or mitigate the burden uh, on these people because it's, it's only going to continue to get worse as the weather gets nicer. There's a project going on in that area. The trucks are up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, in fact, while I was speaking to this woman on the phone, she told me that about 10 or 12 trucks uh, were, were driving by. So um, she had some suggestions. We'll bring that up to the administration, but I just wanted to give everybody an update on that. Okay. President Gon, can I jump in here a second? Yeah, sure. I also spoke to this uh, this young lady about uh, the concerns that you know she reached out. Of, you know, we got the letter two weeks ago. She reached out and, and requested a phone call, and you know, I had a, I had the same conversation you did with her. And it's, you know, I know we all sympathize. I mean, it's 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 this is an issue way before me on council. I mean, I've heard about it, but you know, I got to thinking that the owner of that uh, uh, business where these trucks are coming out, right? So. Okay, that's the front door. Call, let's call that the front door. Coming out there and going across the bridge or, or not going across the bridge now, going on to third and railroad. But that property goes farther, farther back than we realize. That property goes probably past Walmart down near me, okay? So, and I know, I mean, I don't logistically know everything, but I know that there's, there's access there. Um, along the train tracks, there's a road there. And maybe they can come out in Taylor. Maybe they can come out, you know, below Davis Street. Or may, maybe we're looking at it the wrong way. Why don't we go out the back door instead of the front door with these trucks? I, I don't know if it's logistically possible, but I think it's something we can explore. Maybe talk to the owner. Maybe they can work with us uh, because, you know, they're affecting uh, lives here uh, on every level, you know, health and safety and, and all kinds of uh, noise pollution. So maybe there's an option to go out that way and, and reach, you know, reach their destination. I don't know, but I, I just think it's something we should look at or somebody should look at. No, that's a great point. Um, we, we should, we should look into that and we'll include that in the, uh, in the correspondence that we'll send. Um, that's a great idea. Well, thank you. Um, <clears throat> And it's not, you know, th this isn't just one person complaining either, as you all well know, this is still literally the whole street. I mean, the, the person that I was dealing with is on one end, the people, most of the people that signed this letter are dispersed you know, on the other end, all the way to the middle. So it's pretty bad. Um, okay, what's, the name, what, what's the name of the business where all these trucks are going? Uh, geez, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, Salt or something like that? Yeah, it's right next to uh, the Her the Lackawanna Heritage Valley uh, Trail, right off of uh, Elm Street when you cross the bridge. Yeah, Kevin, I'm not sure if it's salt. It might be ash, though. Okay. Still so, column dump, yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else? We have about 10 minutes left. Okay. All right, everybody, we'll take a 10 minute recess here and then we'll convene at 6.30 for a regular meeting. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to call this public meeting of Scranton City Council Tuesday, February 9th, 2021 to order. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silent reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and also for those who have passed away in our community. Let us also take a moment of silence for all of the people in our community, in our country, in our world who have passed away from this devastating virus. This pandemic has turned our world upside down, but we must remain hopeful and strong we continue to pray for the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they have protection and peace. Whether we are here at home or abroad, surrounded by many people suffering from this illness or only a few, let us stick together, endure together, mourn together, and in place of our anxiety, let us have hope and peace.
Thank you. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster. Present. Mr. McAndrew. Present. Dr. Rothschild. I'm here. Mr. Donahue. Here. Mr. Gaughan. Here. Thank you, Ms. Carrera. I would like to make a motion uh, to take from the table resolution number 115 of 2021. Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second to take from the table resolution number 115, 2021. This piece is being taken from the table and placed in seventh order for a final vote. This is the agreement with Barry Isaac and Associates Incorporated for engineering cons consultation services for OECD. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Please dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A, emergency declaration issued by Mayor Paige G. Cognetti, dated January 29, 2021, due to impending extreme weather. 3B, correspondence received from OECD Executive Director, dated January 29, 2021, regarding COVID-19 small business grant update. 3C, Lackawanna County Planning Commission Subdivision and Land Development Evaluation Report, review January 6, 2021. 3D, Minutes of the Civil Service Commission meeting held January 7, 2021. 3E, Minutes of the Civil Service Commission special meeting held January 28, 2021. Are there any comments on any of the third order items? If not received and filed, do any council members have any announcements at this time? I have one uh, or two actually. Um, on February 28th, Johnson's College will be giving out 250 turkey dinners at 11 a.m. on a first come, first served basis. This is a collaborative effort by Shoprite, which is uh, which has donated the food, and Toyota of Scranton. Um, along with Johnson students that will be packaging the food. There will be a limit of four meals per vehicle and as, you know, utilizing a safe drive-through pickup. So great, great job to them guys. Also, uh, Bob Gaddens, re uh, Gaddens reminded me of the NAOG food drive, which actually started today, February 9th. And it's also on uh, February 11th from five to seven. And again, February 13th to the 14th, 10 to 3, pre 3 uh, p.m. Donations go to local pantries, which, you know, these are, uh, they want non-perishables for this. So canned goods, legumes, dried stuff like that. And then any cash is donated will go for uh, gift cards. Also, um, I'd like to uh, extend birthday wishes to my colleagues. Uh, Mr. Gone, yesterday was your birthday and Mr. Schuster was the big 4-0 uh, last week. So happy birthday, guys. That is all I have. Thank you very much. Any other announcements? Um, I just wanted to congratulate the Scranton Ice Festival. I know that I had mentioned it um, a couple of times that uh, that was going to be going on this past weekend. And it sounds like it was a successful event. And they raised several thousand dollars to go to Scranton small businesses. Um, and I think it gave people something to, um, you know, to do over the weekend and, and to enjoy it. Um, a lot of great ice sculptures um, and um, I think a lot of businesses benefited from it, which was their goal. Um, and so I look forward to that continuing in, in future years. Um, and it sounds like they, um, they maintained safety as well and um, people wore their masks and uh, the sculptures were uh, spread out like throughout the, throughout the downtown area at different businesses. So it wasn't like one um, one big crowd, anything like that. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to mention that, that's it. Very good, thank you. Anyone else? I just wanted to mention that uh, next week, NDC, the National Development Council will be coming to caucus at uh, Council's caucus at 545 to give an update 
on the parking garages and the progress that's being made. Mrs. Reed. Thank you. Fourth order, citizens participation. At this time, would someone please make a motion to accept public comment from the following individual, Faye Franis. Make a motion to accept public comment. Second. There's been a motion and a second to accept public comment. Mrs. Reed, would you please read the comments into the record? Thank you. The first submission as follows. Council, what have you done to stop the trucks on Railroad Avenue and 3rd Avenue? Have you decided to start enforcing the law that bans trucks over 10 ton? Mr. DeNaples has a business that has hundreds of trucks going down 3rd Avenue. This is against the law enacted in 1995, banning trucks over 10 ton. Mr. DeNaples has to find another way to get his products delivered. The residents of Scranton should not suffer safety, health issues, or any other adverse effect due to DeNaples trucks. Also, the tractor trailers and big dump trucks are continuing to travel on Railroad Avenue every day, and the police are doing nothing to stop these trucks. Mr. Gawden, you mentioned at last week's meeting that you and the mayor have discussed this situation. Can you please share with the residents of Bellevue what you have discussed and any solutions? What is the status of any contract being signed to have a company take care of our delinquent garbage fees. Today is February 9th, 2021. The last contract ended on December 31st, 2020. Please share with us when you will reintroduce this to hire a company to do this work. Submitted by Faye Franis. And that concludes the public comment. Thank you. Um, on the question? Um, on the question, just a few things. First of all, um, we address the, the Third Avenue issue in the caucus, but I'll address it uh, again tonight. We are gonna, or uh, right now, we are gonna send a letter to the administration um, regarding Third Avenue because we did receive a letter from, it had to be almost every resident who lives on the street about two weeks ago. Um, it is a major problem. It's a major inconvenience. It's a ma has a major impact on uh, the the health, welfare, and safety of the people that live on that street. Um, I know just as somebody with young children, uh, trucks, you know, rumbling up and down the street nonstop day in and day out is not a, a good thing, especially when for those who live there almost their entire lives, they never had to deal with that. So it's an inconvenience for the people on Third Avenue uh, because of a business on Elm Street, which does not seem to be, uh, is not fair whatsoever. Um, so we are going to ask for action from the administration. As for Ms. Uh, Franis's uh, comment on, have you decided to start enforcing the law that bans trucks over 10 ton? Council cannot enforce any laws. Uh, we are legislators. Um, we don't, we're not the police department. We're not the administration. The police department would be the uh, department that would enforce any laws that were passed, any ordinances or resolutions in the past um, uh, banning trucks in that area. In fact, when I met with uh, members of the administration and the former police chief in the summer of 2020, um, they told me that at, at, at least once a month, the police department would be on Third Avenue um, enforcing the uh, Jake Brake uh, ban there that we put in place at my my direction and council's direction and um, uh, there was going to be some other things done there so we are going to find out uh, if that's been done I would like to know personally how many trucks have been uh, cited since the summer of 2020 and I do think that action should be taken councilman McAndrew had I thought a pretty good idea um, in investigating if there's an alternate route um, the ultimate solution to this problem, as I've mentioned before, is the Elm Street Bridge being replaced. Unfortunately, that's like three or four years out. And I don't think that the people of Third Avenue should have to uh, continue to be burdened by this for the next three to four years. So there has to be another solution. Um, and we're, we're going to do the best that we can to investigate that and, and make sure that uh, those people are not burdened any further. So we're going to do the best that we can as council, but ultimately, you know, the mayor and her administration are the ones that have to enforce any laws on the books and are the ones that have to, um, you know, 
make sure that this, this does not occur. Anyone else? Have, oh, uh, and one other point. This, uh, we did mention this in the caucus, but Ms. Fran has also asked about the status of the delinquent refuse uh, fees. I just wanna make very clear, council did their part. We did our due diligence. When the contract came to us in late 2020, we did what council is supposed to do, which is to go through the contract with the fine tooth comb, make sure that um, it is uh, you know, representative of making sure that the people of the city of Scranton get a good deal. Um, so our solicitor, uh, to his credit, went through uh, with all of us and made some significant changes to make sure that the contract benefited not a, a private company, but the city of Scranton and the, and the taxpayers. So we did that. We gave our recommendations. Uh, we gave the language in December of, um, of 2020, and it's February 9th, 2021, and we haven't received anything yet. So the ball's not in our court. The ball is in the administration and the mayor's court. So uh, the business administrator did say that we are supposed to see legislation, I think, next week or in the next few weeks. So just wanted to make sure we made that point. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so on. Fifth order, 5A motion. Councilman Schuster, any motions or comments? No, nothing at this time. Thank you. Councilman McAndrew, any motions or comments? Uh, I have a comment or actually a notice. Um, there's an upcoming fire department vacancy civil service test. Um, Signups will be, uh, will begin February 16th through February, February 26th. Um, all the information is awesome on the website. So there's a downloadable application on the city website where it can be filled out and uh, the interested applicants need to submit this between, like I said, the 16th and the 26th uh, with a non-refundable fee uh, in the amount of $75. Uh, so like I said, I'm not gonna read all this because it's all posted on the website if anybody's interested. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman McAndrew. Dr. Rothschild, any motions or comments? Uh, none at this time, thank you. Okay, thank you. And Councilman Donahue, any motions or comments? I have nothing at this time, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I just have two quick things. So the um, uh, we received a, an email from a gentleman from Clearview Street. There is an issue with, uh, tr again, unfortunately, truck tractors, uh, or tractor trailers rather, um, that are coming down the 17, 18, and 1900 blocks of Clearview Street. And they're coming from North Main Avenue uh, from West Scranton. They encounter the railroad and expressway bridges and they realize that they can't go under them. So they're veering left on a Euclid Avenue and then they're traveling down Euclid and then they're turning onto Clearview Street and it's call it causing all sorts of problems um, here. So um, the, the neighbor that reached out and I know everyone in, in this span of Clearview Street is, is upset about this. Um, they did say that in the past they had asked uh, for uh, signage to be put up, um, but they didn't get anywhere with that. So um, Mrs. Reed, I, could, did you set forward this already? I can't remember, or because we got uh, about three or four requests this week. Um, I, I don't believe I was included on those emails, Councilman Gunn. Okay, you know what, I'm looking I'm looking now. It's a good thing I brought it up there. You weren't included on this one, so I'm gonna forward this to you. Um, Thank you. If we could send it to the um, DPW, or yeah, the DPW and the police department, I think would be involved in that. Um, so I, I, I'm sure uh, signage might help, and I don't know what else they could come up with. But And then if you could just ask them if they could get uh, back to this gentleman, he provided his email address and um, his address as well. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention was I talked about it in caucus, but we did receive several updates uh, from the business administrator, which I do appreciate. I asked last week for updates on quite a few things. Um, the, um, the one thing that solicitor Hayes is going to meet with uh, the labor solicitor, Bob Uffberg, about the um, police chief, the acting uh, police chief. Um, so this just has to do with making sure that we're following. I just want to make sure that we're following the rules. According to the, to the administrative code, um, 
when you appoint someone as an acting director, you only have 30, it's only for 35 days, according to the code. So we, this has been a few months now. So we wanna make sure that we're following the, the, the administrative code and the rules there. Um, also, we're still waiting for an update on one of the things that I asked for that I think is really important and it's the recommendations from Act 47. And I know the administration is working on putting something together. There's two things in particular, and I, I brought this up, it predates this administration, it goes back to the uh, previous administration, but the fund balance policy and the debt management policy are two things that I've asked for um, repeatedly. I think they're very, very important, especially since we're coming up on exiting Act 47. Um, so I would like to see what progress has been made on that. Um, and that's all I have this week. Thank you. So just to, just to touch on that, Councilman Gunn, real quick, mm -hmm. uh, I believe they are in the process of like deep, like really starting to get into the process of formulating those two policies. That's okay. what, at least what I've heard in my discussions with them. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay, Mrs. Reed. Thank you. 5B. For introduction and ordinance, amending file of the council number 11, 2020, entitled Approving the Transfer of a Restaurant Liquor License Owned by Oak Street Express, LLC, 610 North Main Street, Taylor, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, 18517, Restaurant Liquor License Number R-3114, to Aradahe Dev Beer, LLC, the Mini Mart, 401 Wyoming Avenue and Mulberry Street, Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, 18503, as required by the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board to include additional requirements per the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. Second. On the question. The only thing I have on the question here, and Kevin, if you could look into this before next week, you know, I don't have a problem with this because it's a, a standard uh, boilerplate type thing that we, we get got often over the last few years. I just don't understand what this legislation is actually doing. Like it says in the one, two, three, fourth whereas clause that the liquor control board requested additional clarification on the location of the premises and inclusion of the date of the public hearing. And then this uh, mini mart seeks to be in compliance with the requirements of the liquor control board and request this revised ordinance to accomplish the same. I just, I don't know what's different with this than what we had previously passed. I don't, unless I, I just don't understand the point of it. I'll get confirmation bill. Um, okay. But the, as far as I understand, my understanding is that the, let the, whatever the proposed legislation that we passed, um, this uh, summer with regard to this liquor license did not indicate that they, that there was a, a hearing, which there was, I uh, may not have identified the address. So they asked for further details to be included in the, in the legislation. And that, that's what uh, I think has been uh, resubmitted by, by the law department, but I'll confirm and get back okay. to it. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I just wanted to, wanted to make sure. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Uh, anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so on. 5C for introduction and ordinance, amending file of the council number 67, 2014, entitled. Amending file of the council number 52, 1903, entitled. An ordinance as amended relating to dogs, the licensing of, and dog pound, therefore and providing for a fund and regulating the payment of bills for the treatment for the prevention of hydrophobia by decreasing licensees by amending section 1A to change the fees of the current dog licenses for all dogs within the city limits. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. On the question, as I mentioned in the caucus, I, uh, this is a really good idea. We've always gotten complaints about the, the fee being too high um, in the amount of $35. The one thing I do think we should look into, though, is 
and I is it the county or the state? I, I can't remember off the top of my head that just has a one time fee. Um, it's a state. Is it the state? Yeah. Yes. So we might want to look into does it make more sense for the city just to have a one time fee uh, instead of every year registering your dog? Um, I don't know if that makes a, a ton of sense. So we, I'm, I'm going to look into that and, and see what other uh, other municipalities and counties do. Um, see if that might make more sense. But I do agree with with uh, this legislation and lowering the fee at least. Anyone else? Only, yeah, question? and the only thing I would bring up there, Bill, about uh, you know the just doing it once as a one time fee is one of the things they request for on the form is that the you know, the dog is up to date on its rabies and something else. And it actually asks you to give you, give a confirmation number on that. But just, so just to keep that in mind, at least if you could report that, you know, uh, yeah, that's but that's one, point. one of the functions of it is that it, you know, make sure that they're up to date, but I mean, our collection level on that, I mean, I don't think we've hit a thousand dogs in the last few years per year and we all know there's more than a thousand dogs in the city so hopefully you know we can start enforcing it a little better too but i agree 100 percent that it needs to be lowered yeah and i i know that they're that's a good point and i know that they're um adding an online payment option now if it's not already in place to to help people instead of going down to city hall you can just easily do it online so okay very good I have a quick question though. I, I'm just, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not clear on the process. So I, I'm thrilled that they lowered the, the fee because it's been a point of contention for a lot of residents and they've been heard, which is great. But like, you know, uh, my car registration, I get a notice every year. Is that, is that the process with the city? So, yeah. So once you register, once you register the dog in the first year, normally not this year, cause they haven't sent them out yet. Cause they lowered them. But after I registered my dog the first year, usually in December, you'd get a notice from the city, you know, to renew your registration. Okay. And then what happens if, but, if, but that's what, that's only if you register it the first time. Right. So if you never register, all right. That's yes. And then what happens if you don't pay next year, you know, God forbid, you know, a dog or what happens when, when a dog passes away? Like do you notify the city, do they do you send the registration form back and say, I'm sorry, but I no longer have this animal or. I'm just curious about the whole process because I, I just don't understand it. I, I just yeah, we can you could uh, <laughs> double double check on that with the licensing and inspection department. Yeah. Uh, I could look in. I'll I'll look into that for you, uh, Councilman. Thanks. Just my own clarity. I, I don't know the answer to the question. I, um, it is termed in terms of the their their process, but I'll I'll look into it for you. Thank um, you. I would agree. I'm not sure how enforceable um, it's really been. Right. Um, uh, Council McGon, I know that the state, um, in order, f they have a, li a lifetime license fee, I think it's uh, about $50, but I know that in order to be eligible for it, you your dog must be either microchipped or, oh, okay. yeah. um, it's my, I, I'm, that's my understanding of it under the department of, of agriculture's regulations. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I, and that I believe sense. that, so that the way the state does it too in the county is different because the county charges the fee to give it to the state right? because then the state uh, game warden, I believe, is the animal control officer in other parts of the county. But, you know, cities are different in that respect. Since we deal with our own animal control, we have our own fee structure. Right. All right. Anybody else on a question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5D for introduction. A resolution approving in accordance with section 147F of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended, a plan of financing of the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority and declaring that it is desirable for the health, safety, and welfare of the people of the city of Scranton for the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority to undertake a project for Howard Gardner Multiple Intelligence Charter School. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. 
So moved. Okay. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5E for introduction, a resolution authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials for the city of Scranton to execute and enter into a contract with Greenman Peterson Incorporated to perform civil engineering and professional consulting services for the city of Scranton, Kaiser Valley stormwater and flood mitigation study. This time I'll entertain a motion that item 5E be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. Uh, on the question, uh, this is just, you know, this is a first step in this process. This is work that needs to get done um, on the front end before we could even start applying for grants. So I'm happy to see this uh, put in motion. Um, I agree, Councilman Dunahue. And, you know, I how many times I've been over the last few years down in uh, this area of the city of Scranton with neighbors and standing outside their homes after a, a storm. Lenny Cerebro is one gentleman that comes to mind that continued to come to council year after year uh, looking for relief. And I know the city did in, in some ways uh, help him. And it's just a very difficult situation unless you get a company like this to come in and do a full-blown analysis and attack this problem with, with uh, this type of study and this type of information. Um, I think this will hopefully resolve it once and for all. And it's probably gonna cost a significant amount of money. And that's the reason that we do the study first as Councilman Dunahue, uh, Dunahue mentioned, and then we try to go for uh, grant money. And they did uh, mention the Pennsylvania uh, Department of Community and Economic Development, uh, the H2O program. So they're gonna uh, go th and see if they can get grant funding through that. Um, but like I said, there's been uh, time after time, just recently up in uh, the Fawnwood development, um, we're still going back and forth with the neighbors up there and, and the city's trying to help them. Um, but it, it's just a difficult situation for a lot of homeowners. And um, hopefully this is the, the first step in rectifying a lot of that. Anyone else? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5F for introduction of resolution authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials for the city of Scranton to execute and enter into a contract with Benebate Incorporated doing business as neighborly software to manage the Office of Economic and Community Development's housing, economic development, and grant programs. This time I'll entertain a motion that item 5F be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. Right, was there a second? Oh, there was a second, okay. On the question? Um, on the question, this is gonna cost uh, $36,800 to enter into this contract for this uh, software with this firm. And the um, maintenance costs, the ongoing costs every year through OECD is gonna be about $16,000. One of the things that I will say about this is that um, I, I think that, and th this is a move in the right direction, in terms of the city, we need to continue to use technology to our advantage um, and make sure that we're looking at these types of programs to make sure that we're um, doing everything we can to be in compliance with, with HUD, which I know that's a huge priority in OECD and something that has to be done, and um, making sure that we're efficient. And I think that that checks both of those boxes. So that's why I'll be in favor of this. Anyone else on the question? Uh, I would just like to second that. Um, I know that, you know, in the course of, cause all these things come in, they're in different accounts. So this will help consolidate that better. I know at one point, what at the beginning of 2019, I think we still had uh, money from 2014 that wasn't spent yet, you know, but we've continuously worked on that over the last few years and, I think now we're up to 17 or 18 and, but this will help, uh, you know, organize that better moving forward. On the question, I, I agree. I, um, you know, I, I think that the amount of money is, um, is reasonable and will be worth it in the end uh, to increase that 
efficiency. Um, you know, I know since Director Cipriani has um, has been in that position, uh, she's found you know a number of um, grant dollars that could be used uh, and hadn't been. So um, you know, we would hate to be wasting those resources. Um, and I think that this will will help to uh, keep them organized and, and tracking uh, those um, grants and funds in a better way. Anyone else? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5G for introduction of resolution, accepting a donation provided to the city of Scranton by Lamar Advertising Company for 16 billboards to relay the Scranton 311 message. This time I'll entertain a motion that item 5G be, be introduced into its uh, proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. Um, on the question, um, th these signs have been up for quite some time, haven't they? Um, I don't know, I believe so. I've seen them over the last maybe month or two. Yeah, I wasn't sure if there was a reason why we were getting this now or if anybody had any information on this. Um, I don't, but I know sometimes like in the past, um, things have been donated to whether it's a police department or the fire department and the person gives them the donation. And then after the fact, usually we would receive legislation accepting it um, just as kind of a, a formality. All right, thanks. Okay, very good. Um, on the question, I just wanted to mention that, you know, this Scranton 311 uh, system, I think has been really a good thing for the city um, in terms of making sure that there's kind of one place where people could go to ask questions, get information. Um, it really Im improves the efficiency of the city. And I, I really have liked seeing that over the last few years because oftentimes in the past, um, you would call one department and get one answer and then they put you to another department and it was confusing for people. Um, I think the billboards are a good idea just so that people get an understanding of, uh, you know, where they should go if they do have a question or they do need um, some kind of service or they do need some something in their neighborhood. The one thing that I really, and I think Councilman Dunahue mentioned this or someone mentioned it uh, last week or the week before, is the new design of the website, which kind of ties in really nicely with Scranton 311. The website for years and years and years was a, kind of a mess. It was almost just one, the front page of it, and then everything was thrown on there. This uh, categorizes everything really nice. It's just really good, you know, if you're a citizen and you wanna come on and, and look for information, um, you can easily find it now, uh, which is really nice. So I wanna give kudos to, uh, to the administration on that. Anyone else have a question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so on. Five eighths for introduction of resolution, appointment of David E. Falchek, 1705 Church Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18508, as a member of the Board of Ethics, effective February 17, 2021. Mr. Falchek will be replacing Bruce Redock, who resigned effective October 1, 2020. Mr. Falchek will fill the unexpired term of Bruce Redock, which is scheduled to expire August 31, 2021. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5H be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. So moved. Second. On the question. Um, on the question that we, you know, we struggled for quite some time in finding someone who would be interested in being on this board. So I want to thank Mr. Falchek for um, taking time out of his schedule and, um, you know, wanting to be involved in, in public service to the city. The board now has all, uh, will have all five members on it, which is a great thing for the city. Just a few short years ago, this board was defunct. It was not operational. There was no attention paid really to ethics in the city. And it took uh, myself and this council uh, to stand up and get this board up and running again to completely revamp the ethics code. Um, I, I believe there's a section now on the city's website uh, for the, uh, the ethics board um, where if you wanna go and see some of these campaign finance report, you can do that. Um, 
the other thing that I thought was extremely important and that I push for, and I know Councilman Dunahue when, when, uh, on council with me then pushed for was campaign contributions being limited and reined in. Um, so now there's a limit, there's a cap where in the past one person could uh, give a mayoral candidate, um, you know, 40, $50,000 and just not the way the business should be done in the city. So I'm very, very, very proud of the fact that we're at a point now where we have a fully functioning ethics board. And if something is going on in city hall um, that is not above board, there's a place now where the employees and the residents of Scranton can go to, and there's rules and regulations in place. Um, so I wish uh, all the board members the best of luck. And again, thank Mr. Falchek for um, his, his willingness to serve the city of Scranton. Um, on the question, I uh, also wanted to add uh, that I'm happy to see that someone has uh, stepped forward uh, and applied for the position. Um, you know, the work that the ethics uh, board is doing is very important. And I've gotten um, to know Mr. Falchek over the years and to um, have some conversations with him about uh, the city and, um, you know, transparency and the direction that we're headed in. and. I feel that he'll uh, be a great fit to serve on this on this board and um, have a lot of uh, great things to bring to them. Okay, very good. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so on. Sixth order, 6A, no business at this time. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of the Council Number 51, 2021, amending file of the Council Number 78, 2019, an ordinance as amended entitled General City Operating Budget 2020 by transferring $13,591.25 from account number as noted, non-departmental expenditures contingency, to account number as noted, to provide funding for payment of fire department expenses through the 2020 budget period. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Finance? As the chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend uh, 7A for final passage. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes, I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 116, 2021, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Scranton creating an ad hoc committee to explore the feasibility of renaming Wyoming Avenue or another prominent roadway in honor of United States President Joseph R. Biden, Jr. As chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question? On the question, I, I'm a broken record on this, so I'll keep it very, very short. Um, I mentioned in the caucus the uh, the committee members that we've uh, we brought together. So it'd be myself and Councilman Dunahue that are representing the council. Um, Don King, our city planner, will be on the, the committee. Leslie Collins, the executive director of Scranton Tomorrow. Larry West, the chief of staff for Senator Blake. Roberta Jaddick, the secretary for the Green Ridge Neighborhood Association. Uh, Kevin Hayes, our solicitor. And Mark Dewar, the Lackawanna County Director of Building Maintenance. So I want to thank all of these people that are going to take time out of their busy schedule and their uh, their lives to, um, to 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 serve on this committee. And as I mentioned, I think it's very important that the city of Scranton do something uh, formally do something to honor uh, President Biden. As I mentioned the last couple of weeks when this is on the last two weeks when this is on the agenda. Um, it should really be, whether you're a Democrat or Republican and independent, or you're completely uh, agnostic to politics, um, it should be a point of pride that the president of the United States is from the city of Scranton. It was born his first, uh, was born here and raised his first 10 years in, on North Washington Avenue and has always come back here. Um, and I believe represents uh, the city of Scranton 
on the national stage really well. And it's been extremely positive for us. All the attention that the city's gotten over the last uh, uh, few years, and especially within the last year uh, during the campaign and, and his eventual victory. So I think uh, it's very, obviously it's very rare that you have um, a president of the United States from your city. So we should capitalize on that and uh, honor him in, in some way. And uh, we'll uh, do that and uh, report back to council uh, from this committee. Thank you. And thank you for your support. Anyone else on the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gone? Yes, I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. 7C for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 117, 2021, authorizing appointment of Mary Jo Sheridan, 1213 Schlager Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, to serve as a member of the Board of Directors of the Lackawanna County Land Bank to a five-year term, which commenced on December 31, 2020, and is scheduled to expire December 31, 2025. Your person for the committee on rules, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes, I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully. Now. 7D for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 118, 2021, authorizing reappointment of Marion E. Gatto, 12 Frank Way, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, to serve as a member of the Board of Directors of the Lackawanna County Land Bank to a five year term, which commenced on December 31, 2020, and is scheduled to expire December 31, 2025. As chairperson for the committee on rules, I recommend final passage of item 7D. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gone? Yes, I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. 7E for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for Adoption, Resolution Number 119, 2021, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials for the city of Scranton to execute and enter into an agreement with Bought Studios, 1095 Main Street, Swoyersville, Pennsylvania, 18704, to restore the stained glass transom windows at the entrance of City Hall. What is the recommendation of, of the, of the chairperson for the Committee on Community Development. As chair for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7E. Second. On the question. On the question, um, I did ask a question last week of the business administrator about what line item these funds were coming out of. And um, Mr. Daly responded that they're coming out of the grant matching line item in the uh, 2021 budget. Anyone else on the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes, I hereby declare item 7E legally and lawfully adopted. 7F? For consideration by the Committee on Community Development for Adoption, Resolution Number 120, 2021, accepting the recommendation of the Historical Architecture Review Board and denying the Certificate of Appropriateness for L.R. Costanzo Company, Incorporated, 123 North Main Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, for the following upgrades to site lighting throughout the property at PNC Bank, 201 Penn Avenue, Scranton, PA, 18503. And Councilman Dunahue, you're going to table this one. Make a motion 
I make a motion to table item 7F. Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second to table item 7F, resolution number 120-2021. On the question. We're tabling this piece of legislation tonight in order to schedule a hearing, which will take place immediately prior or during a council meeting to formally notify the applicant and property owner of the date and time of the hearing. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of tabling item 7F signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so on. 7 3. For consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for Adoption, Resolution Number 121, 2021, accepting a donation provided to the City of Scranton for two thermal body temperature cameras to be donated by ICU Surveillance Service, LLC. What is the recommendation of the Chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety? As chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of 7G. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gong? Yes, I hereby declare item 7G legally and lawfully adopted. 7H, previously tabled for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for Adoption, Resolution Number 115, 2021, authorizing the Mayor and other appropriate city officials for the City of Scranton to execute and enter into an agreement with Barry Isett and Associates Incorporated to perform engineering services for the Office of Economic and Community Development. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Community Development? As chair for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7H. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gaughan. Yes, I hereby declare item 7H legally and lawfully adopted. Eighth order, old business. <laughs> file of the council number 43, 2021, amending file of the council number 118 of 2017 entitled an ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to take all necessary actions to implement the consolidated submission for community planning and development programs to be funded under the Community Development Block Grant Program, Home Investment Partnership Program, and Emergency Solutions Grants Program for the period beginning January 1, 2018, by amending the 2018 Action Plan by utilizing $15,000 under the Community Development Block Grant previously allocated to Boys and Girls Club Park It Program to help low-income mothers retain suitable housing through St. Joseph's Center's Mother Infant Program. This piece of legislation is currently tabled. Uh, next week, February 16th, uh, I will entertain a motion to take this, uh, to place this piece in seventh order for a final vote. If anyone wishes to provide comment on this specific piece of legislation, you may do so by emailing lreed at scrantonpa.gov. That's our city clerk, Lori Reed or by U.S. Mail at Scranton Municipal Building, 340 North Washington Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18503, Attention City Clerk's Office, by 3 p.m. next Tuesday, February 16th. Thank you. Um, if there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.